Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, Shalom. The message of grace yes. is so very critical. Uh, but I wanted to hear from you and to let our viewers hear from you because it is believed that one say forever say. No. So you can live any life you want to no. live. But with what you just said and your dream and the revelation and with what Paul said and the, the fact word? that the Bible says that everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself Absolutely. even as he is pure. How do you relate that to the message of grace well, how and can just live in anyhow, <laughs> anyway and making think, them go into hell? Yeah, think about Paul the Apostle. If I do not put my body under subjection, I would be a castaway. That kills the whole message right there of that free grace they call it huh mm -hmm. it's not in the bible he that endures uh, the end, unto the end the same shall, shall be saved. saved so our salvation is a continual walk with god closely the message today that people are wanting is a free lunch uh, uh hamburger style fast mm -hmm. uh, nobody wants to work for it mm -hmm. you know give it to me it's mine no 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 the gospel, Jesus made it very clear, it's a narrow way mm. that very few will find. Mm. It's a narrow road. It's not a wide road. Mm. So today they're preaching the wide road, sadly. Let's go back to what Jesus said. And the Lord was very clear on the message. Somebody's blessed. Amen. One saved is not always saved. Be careful of these flying doctrines around the world that what to do is, is immaterial. Uh, you are covered. I'm telling you the truth, you are covered. Now, can I tell you a greater truth? You are not covered. He <laughs> said, little children, be not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Don't get deceived. The, the thing is, okay, let them bring the proof of what is being taught. Can I tell you this? Jealously guard your salvation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Many people used to have all I'm saying now, but they don't have it anymore. They have sold out. Let him not think at his time take it lest he falls. Lest he falls. If you are saved, you will love God. If you are saved, you will love righteousness. If you are saved, you will experience the joy of the Lord in your life. If you are saved, you will experience the peace of God. My peace I give unto you. Peace is one of the vital proofs of redemption. Peace. John 14, 27. Because his name is what? The praise of peace. And now he lives in you. So peace that passes all knowledge. Peace that cannot be explained to anybody's mental, intellectual satisfaction. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that passes all understanding keeps your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Peace. Peace. Now, can you buy peace with money? Can you buy joy with money? The believer can fall out of grace and lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. 
I did disprove last time that the concept of one saved forever saved is a fallacy. I'm sorry to say it. I wish it were not true, but it is the truth. The concept that once you are saved, you can do anything and nothing else changes it is not accurate. Hallelujah. I love those who brought this perspective to the body of Christ. I honor them. We honor their spiritual investments and that which they have brought to the body of Christ. But as we grow spiritually, there is need to adjust. I was speaking in a pastor's conference yesterday and I was telling them that one of the things we must sustain as men of God is the humility to adjust when greater light is open unto us. It is very embarrassing. There are many things I used to believe. I no longer believe them now. And there are many things I didn't used to believe. I probably would argue with them. But now they have become, they have been incorporated into my belief system. So realize that the life of a believer is a life of consistent repentance and alignment. This is the, this is the symbol, it is the signature that characterizes spiritual growth. That occasionally you will be required to repent and align. The word repent is not an ungodly word. It's not a word for sinners. To repent means to turn from a perspective and begin to see from another view. So we will need to repent and align ourselves please let it not embarrass you if in the course of your Christian experience you find the need to adjust we all have at one point or the other believed certain things about God about men about ministry and as the Word of God opens up realize and place your pos yourself in a position where you would say I am a student in the school of the Spirit Isaiah, when he saw the Lord, he broke down. There was nothing embarrassing about it. There is still much more for us to see in the Spirit. And so if we camp around this that has become our experience, then we may never grow. We must sustain the humility to keep aligning. That spiritual alignment is what opens up us to become um, uh, portals for, for kingdom activities. Just like Mike shared, he said, let it be done in the earth, in this body. That this body will become a gate where spiritual things can find expression. Hallelujah.